Arsenal uh, win that possession and it's broken nicely to Gazzola 30 metres from goal plays it to the edge of the area Alexis Sanchez goes for goal and scores that's a brilliant goal from Alexis Sanchez he's been Arsenal's star man this season and maybe now they're going to get the ball Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Gooners in the USA podcast. Mike, good evening. Good evening. Uh, Are we Gooners in the USA, or are we Gooners in the USA and Canada today? We are Gooners in North America today, as I am up in the great, cold, vast Canada. Dude, it's just too cold up here. Well, and this is coming from a guy from Denver. Yeah, but in Denver, it's like 20 degrees and then 70 degrees, and then... You know, it's just this is too cold. Well, awesome. Well, tonight we have uh, we've re- replaced your Americanism uh, Canada, since you're in eh? Canada. Since you're in Canada, we have an American on who does a podcast with a Canadian. So there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing better than that. We special guest, and it is a uh, a last minute guest. So we really want to say thank you to uh, AJ Matuchniak. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Oh my God, you actually did that. That was. I don't think anybody's ever pronounced it right on the wow, first go. Good that was Mike. absolutely insane. You know what? I listened. I listened to your podcast, Full Ninety Gooners, which is an excellent podcast. I listened to it last night, and I believe your father had a question, and so that I, I cheated. <laughs> I, I got the name off of that. But AJ, thanks for joining us. Dude, thank you for having me on, man. Uh, hopefully, uh, you won't hear any chewing or anything, as I currently have just a little bit left of my uh, dinner in front of me. Well, that's okay. Are you, are you having fava beans and a nice Chianti? <laughs> Surprisingly, I actually made a pretty damn good meal, if I do say so myself. Got some uh, shrimp, some uh, like there's I don't know, there's some vegetable that I don't know the name of, but it's good. So <laughs> there you go. It's corn. No. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, this is our first attempt at a North American podcast exchange program, and and we couldn't be happier to start with. Uh, Start with you guys. I've been listening uh, to to you and Mario and 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 your, and your other podcasters uh, since the beginning of the season when we first started potting. And you know, I just got to tell you, I, lo- I love the show. It's 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 kind of uh, you know, we have a lot of similarities between our show. Not that we've patterned it uh, after each other one way or the other, but it's it's I, I, you know, good guests. You guys are, are pulling some fantastic guests, including last night where you had. The incomparable uh, Danny, the GFP or the or the uh, BFG, depending on whether you're talking to Gimli or, or 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 Danny, as well as our good friend Jason Davies, who we have yet to have on the pod, but I, I think he's he's getting angrier. He's holding and angrier. out for Wendy's. Well, he's getting angrier and angrier about our treatment of Aaron Ramsey. So uh, <laughs> I, we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. But uh, excellent podcast last night, and and. Um, and fantastic, and 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 because I know that you do this on your podcast, I think most podcasts probably do this. But just to get to know you a little bit better, tell us about you know your your Arsenal story when you first started watching Arsenal, when you first started podcasting. Uh, it's an you know interesting story. We'd love to hear it. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. I mean, I really appreciate all the uh, all the love you've given me there. I think basically what you're trying to say is the similarities we have in our pods is that we're both shit. Well, yeah, I mean, but, but. But, but we're less shit than we could be, and we're, we're not we're less as shit than we could be. Hey, there's and only one as, way up. There's only yeah. one way to go, and that's up. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and we're, yeah, we have we have a long, long way to climb. But yeah, well, um, but yeah, to to your second question, um, how I got into Arsenal. So, um, I, as you mentioned, my father who posted the question on the full ninety Gooner last night, he's actually from England. Born and raised there, lived there, you know, 25 years before he moved out to the United States. Um, he also lived in London, so he became an Arsenal fan at quite a young age. Um, I grew, or I was born and grew up in the United States, so he basically just forced me to love Arsenal. And um, besides, you know, the heart conditions from you know almost dying every time I watch an Arsenal game, uh, I, I'm really happy that he uh, <laughs> that he that he got me into this uh, wonderful club. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh... Getting into it by birth is 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 one of the best ways. I I, I didn't share that, and uh, Andy didn't. Andy, you didn't share that, did you? Share what? The 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 born into it situation. I mean, you were born right next to this, right next to it. But uh, yeah. from 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 a family perspective, uh, your father isn't an Arsenal supporter, is he? No, it's uh, seven generations. 
that and my father skipped in there somewhere because he's a twat. <laughs> That's nice. We I think he family. just started listening as well. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then podcasting, uh, I understand before you joined up with Mario on full 90, uh, you had your own podcast. Yeah. So uh, I, uh, I had my own podcast called, uh, Arsenal in my blood. We were, um, going for the 2013, 14 season. So the first season we signed Mesut Ozil, we started right in the summer, right before we'd signed him. So I just remember that was crazy, uh, <laughs> going over, going over that signing. But, um, yeah, I went went on for about a year. Didn't didn't make it to to the FA Cup. Got till around April, and just scheduling conflicts with um, my other co-founder. So we weren't able to to really continue that. He just was really busy all the time. So uh, was kind of MIA for a little bit on the podcasting. Kept listening to other podcasts, of course, but um, just waiting really for the right to offer get, to come in. Exactly, waiting for the right <laughs> offer. Waiting for China to come with six hundred thousand pounds a week. Unfortunately, they didn't, and Mario said, here, I'll give you nothing, but uh, come on. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I, <laughs> I, think if, I think if China came and offered me 6,000 calories a day, I would join and start my own <laughs> podcast called Arsenal in My Urine, which is kind of taking after your podcast, but, but yeah, that'd be... uh, that, that, that's how easily I could be bought. But. So, so yeah, joined up with, joined uh, up with Mario a couple years year or two yeah. ago? No, 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 not even that long. Literally, I think a little bit before the start of this season. So it's only been half a year or so. I mean, we, we'd been, like, I'd listened to his podcast um, a few times. Uh, you know, like we would interact on Twitter, but but um, only was I formerly invited um, about half a year ago or so. And uh, yeah, it's been great. I mean, I, I love Mario. He's such a great host. Um, honestly, can't give him enough credit for uh, coming up with a lot of ideas um, and and his new editing, new contract Mario, new, new contract. contract Mario. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, it, it's been great. I love the the uh, full ninety experience. Mario's putting up a banner of you with your with your dinner on <laughs> in his house <laughs> and right his now, <laughs> and, and your and cat. <laughs> nice. Well, dude, sweet. Um, we got a lot of stuff to cover. Even though we had one game this week, it was kind of like two games. So, uh, you ready to roll? Let's do this. Oh, yeah. So, right. question of the week. Mike, do you want to read it since you wrote it this week? I didn't write it, actually. I, uh, oh, that's I right. Se- I selected it from amongst one of our, our fine previous guests. So, you, so you want to shoot? Yeah. So, this is coming from Adam Hoffman, who, again, was one of our guests, true American hero. Uh, many thanks for defending our country. And so, his question is, if you could trade Debushi for an inanimate object, would you... And what would you trade him for? So, Mike, mm. I'll go to you first. Okay. Well, you know, the, and he asked this last week, but we had to we had to push it due to due to time constraints on our pod. And and, um, and and last week we were talking a lot about the French because we had just done our our triple team uh, re-signing, and this was one Frenchman that thankfully we did not re-sign. <laughs> uh, such a shocker there, but. In, in keeping with the French theme from last week, I would probably have to trade him for a French tickler. Oh, now, now, AJ, you're young. You probably don't know what that is yet. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's technically, that's an inanimate object, right? Well, Andy? I, I, would, I think so. Until I put it, <laughs> yeah. until I put it on, baby. Yeah. Oh, geez. Hey. <laughs> All right, think about that for a while. All right, so, yeah, uh-huh. that, uh, that's more information than anyone needed to know about my Debussy trade. Andy, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I'll stick with the the French theme as well. As 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 uh, I'm up in Canada, right next to Quebec. Um, Quebec. Quebec. So, <laughs> as I've spent the last week in Ottawa, and the Canadians here embrace the French Canadians like their ugly sisters, I think I'd trade Debussy for maybe a pound of poutine. Poutine. <laughs> Watch your mouth, young man. You know, I've had some great poutine while I was here. <laughs> But my don't question is, is find, don't let your wife find out about it. <laughs> my question is: Is Debush is he worth a pound of poutine? Do people know, do uh, they know what poutine uh, is? Yeah, I, I I kind of danced around some poutine when I was <laughs> when in Quebec uh, over the summer, and I was too busy having escargot. But uh, so for the listeners who don't know, uh, poutine is a Canadian dish that is just basically French fries with gravy. Uh, cheese curds, and I found out that if it's not a cheese curd, if it's melted cheese, it's not real poutine. Bullshit. And that, yeah, it is bullshit. 
And then um, the really fancy places will put stuff like bacon, pulled pork. It's fucking delicious. It's a heart well, attack then, on a plate, but it's fucking well, delicious. Then there's no way you're getting that in trade for Debushi if that's all you're offering is Debushi. I think yeah, I will take... Kinda, that's kind of poor. I, I, I'll, I'll even take the non-cheese curd type. You so, have to do debushi. So debu- you have to do debushi plus cash in order to get <laughs> a pound of poutine. Back They're like it's but... debushi plus the eight ninety five. It would usually cost you for the poutine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'll, right, we'll just throw debushi in. Fine. <laughs> AJ, what do you got? Um. Well, uh, I mean, if 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 we end up losing Jenkinson on a transfer, and and I have to trade now debushi for somebody, I, I think, or for an inanimate objects. I think it would have to be a statue of a buoy. Um, <laughs> he's just, he just is the right back that we need, the backup guy. He, he'll come in, move, Dabui. he'll scare Stat- oppositions. Statue of Dabui, uh, a buoy, just about as effective as the real a buoy. As the, a real a buoy. I mean, I would, stage. I would argue more in, in certain, because at least he doesn't, you know, give the ball away. At least the statue, you can kind of, you know, put it on top of his head maybe or something maybe like a giant statue so they can't really reach the ball or something but exactly. and, and better yeah. dancer better dancer as well but <laughs> but the uh i think i just called the final years of of, of a buoy's career end stage like you would talk about <laughs> renal cancer <laughs> like the end stage renal cancer end stage a buoy is is the best a buoy but uh, uh, apparently a buoy nowadays is trying to convert people to christianity um yes <laughs> did you see that red nap thing I did see that thing. <laughs> so, Mike, Redknapp is on this show. We've talked about it in the past um, in A League of Their Own. talked about his mother. Right, but he's on a show in A League of Their Own, and apparently him and Abue's son play football. And Redknapp's like, I don't even know the guy, but I get texts from him daily with messages that I should turn to God. And he's like, I don't want these texts. <laughs> and he says this on a, like a TV show, just basically telling Abue to go fuck himself. Uh Good old Abui, man. What happened to that guy going to Sunderland and then never played a game? And Jan Mavila? What? Jan Mavila? No, no, no. Um, um, and Bui actually signed for Sunderland oh, last oh, season. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Wasn't, I wonder if he just went there to stay in. Like, I think he signed there. I think he signed there and he was suspended for something having to do with his age. Like he was forbidden to play. Oh, yeah. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm reading on BBC. I, I, yeah, I think his agent tried to convert too many people to Judaism. <laughs> so, all right. So that's our question of the week. Um, we're doing this pretty late on a Monday night uh, for varying reasons. But, uh, you know, we, right after the game, I'm not sure I could have done the podcast anyway because my blood pressure was too high. It is uh, nice, though, Mike, that people reached out and asked where our podcast was. I mean, that you know, your mom – by yeah. people, you mean two people. Yeah, our but moms. Um, I'm with mine, and she's like, where is this podcast, son? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Chris. Thank you, George. But, uh, but yeah, we. Uh, it's nice to know that we have a demanding public whose thirst for, for podcasts is, is unquenchable. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think I would have had a stroke during the podcast had we done it yesterday. Plus, it's important for our podcast to have waited to find out what was going to happen with Arsene Wenger and his FA charges. We just didn't want to bring you partial information. So, so uh, that is our excuse. Burnley, you kind of think this would have been a uh, a pretty smooth weekend, but uh, man, this kind of felt like a, uh, a a watershed moment in the season. But we've seen that before. Starting lineup unchanged from the previous weekend. I mean, I, I don't think you could p- complain about that. No, it was a good lineup. It, this one was the nerve wracking match because you saw all the other fixtures on Saturday go the way we wanted them to go. And then in the back of our minds, I, I know every Arsenal fan was thinking, we're the only club who that happens and we'll go out and drop points. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it so many times before. Yeah. I almost, I, you know, if I lived by a William Hill, I would have been, I would have been running there to put a bet down on, you know, a tie or a loss, uh, just based on that history. But that shows the nature of us, uh, nervous Nelly, uh, Arsenal supporters, but you like the lineup, AJ? Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think, think there's anything uh you really could have changed about the lineup um you know i think i think bes- it, before um the last game awobi played very well and and in the last game he played very well but um so yeah, i think he deserved to keep his spot because the only one i would have changed would, would maybe be him for chamberlain 
But Awobi's been done well the last two games. He's kind of done better since, you know, he kind of had a little bit of a blip, I think, for a few games. But uh, the fact that he came back in it, did well, um, I don't think he could really change anything. And then obviously Giroud, um, you can't really drop him when he's scoring that many goals. So, yeah, I think, you know, you definitely can't argue with the lineup that Wenger put out there. I don't know. I don't know that. I mean, and obviously with with Jaka, you're going to have to change the lineup going forward. But I, I I think you may see more changes than just that in the coming games, possibly involving Giroud. But uh, anyway, 15 minute from a corner. I mean, we're pretty much dominating possession. Uh, 75 25. Um, the ball drops to Koscielny in the box, and he's got his back to the goal. What the fuck was he thinking? Not taking the overhead kick there. I mean, we know you can do it, Laurent. <laughs> so we've seen you do it. Stop being a puss. That cost us a goal. Could have cost us the game. So, yeah. but um, he just you know. didn't want to take away from Giroud's goal of the season. Yeah, he uh, he. It has to be the goal of the season. You can't. Although Ramsey had no problem trying to take it away from him, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, speaking of Ramsey, now this is where Jason and I are, almost had a falling out yesterday over Twitter. Um, I saw the, I saw the little Twitter, Twitter yeah, action. You, you know, I, I I love Jason, and and I, I was half just wanting his opinion, half expressing mine, and then the other half I was just taking the piss out of because I know I knew that he that he would uh, be easily drawn in. But no, I I love Jace. But yeah, the, his cross in the thirty first minute sends in a Rabona cross, uh, beautiful Rabona cross, incredible skill that almost falls to Giroud for an amazing. Again, overhead kick that that would have been like all things considered the full play of the season. Um, and, and the only thing I can I can think about, unfortunately, is you know, either he's got no confidence in his left foot to cross the ball, but we've <laughs> seen we've seen him take ridiculous shots like Galatasaray with his left foot. So I don't think he's you know I don't think it's that. So the other thing I'm thinking is you know is he just misguided that this is some sort of all-star game or we're up five nothing instead of a, a a crucial league match that we can't afford you know not to win uh, i mean it just to me he has been playing better i'm not saying he's a horrible player and i certainly don't slate ram i mean i joked about ramsey injuring Giroud last week with the cross it was amazing cross Giroud should have gotten to it i'm kidding most of the time and 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 i'm glad to see him get an extended run of games in the midfield but that's the kind of thing that makes me wonder about him because it's not the only time he does that. Can we call what, him what a Rambo? No, I... Oh, get it? There you go. Get it, Mike? <laughs> the Rambona. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I get it. Um, but I see what you did there. I, I, I don't know if it's he was trying to necessarily avoid using his left foot. He, he might have been in the sense that. Um, the thing is with the Rambona is if you actually are good at it, which most pros actually are genuinely quite good at Rabonas for some reason. I can't do it for my life, but um, uh, you kind of get a good never little... never have to. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> you get your a good money, little chip on All it. your money uh, or you do a Rabona. Now. <laughs> Don't think I'd be able to do it, to be honest. But, you no, know, like, the thing is with, with Rabonas is you actually can get a good lift on it and a good kind of scoop on it. Um, and I, he might not have been confident of that on his left foot because, like you said, the Galatasaray goal... He passes with his left foot enough. Like I'm sure he, he has a decent left foot, but uh, in the in a in a way that actually could potentially have have been a different type of way he could have kicked the ball. So there's part of the, part of me that thinks that, but most of me just thinks it's Ramsey being Ramsey trying to uh, show off when you know. I, I don't necessarily blame him for it. I mean, you know, we're we're, we're watching this game to be entertained, but um, yeah. I, I, I think saw- it would. I agree with AJ. I think it's Ramsey being Ramsey, and he's and he's showing off because it seems like for every hundred shit crosses we get from Ramsey, we get one great Rabona. Um, <laughs> but also, if you go back and you watch, he does kind of run out of pitch, and it's he does. He's close. To, <laughs> no, sorry, that was just a siren in the background. <laughs> he he does run out of pitch, and so he gets the ball to where it needs to be, and. I just think it's him trying to be flash, and and it's not what we need to see because we talked about him on the last pod where we just said it'd be nice if we played some more simple passes and not everything has to be a Johan Cruyff and this is his Cruyff, you know. What I mean, well, well, yeah, and if you're if you're up literally, I mean, even if you're up two nothing, uh, 
maybe. But I mean, it, at this point, we were having trouble breaking through. And, and, and believe me, the, the skill was amazing. I was at a basketball game here, an NBA game once. Uh, this is back when the, the Washington Wizards had JaVale McGee, who I know also played in Denver, Andy. I have no um, idea who that is. Okay. Well, this guy was a bonehead who made a – I mean, just freakishly tall guy who just was a head case. And he was all alone going in for a dunk. And instead of just dunking the ball – and we were losing by 10 points – Instead of dunking the ball, he throws it off the backboard to himself, leaps up in the air, and drops the ball and misses the, the dunk. And, and, and every, every, that was the I – mean, he was traded like a week later because, <laughs> you know, why take something relatively simple and, and make it lower percentage? That, and and if, I'm, if I'm wrong about a Rabona being just as easy as a regular left-footed cross, I mean, that, then I'll – you know, I'll, if he was doing that because it was going to produce a better outcome rather than a flashier outcome, then – then, then fine, but it just seems like you know why take a higher percentage play and turn it into a lower percentage play? But well, if it was a play that was that was a high percentage, players would be doing it all the time. And like AJ said, like most pros can do it because they have a ball at their feet six hours a day. Right. But you know, at the end of the day, you don't see it often. Um, and I don't know. It's kind of like someone needs to say to Ramsey, like, "Hey, read the room a little bit, man." Uh, yeah, Payet's P- 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 assist, Rabona assist last year was amazing. It was fantastic looking. Maybe it was a goal. I don't remember if it was a goal or assist. I thought it was. But that's because I didn't give a fuck about him or his team, and I just liked to watch, you know, ooh, that's cool. I was like a little boy in yeah. a – you know, in a museum, but, uh, you know, when we're, when we need to win this game and he's doing that, whatever, let's, let's not belabor the point. I just thought that was Ramsey being Ramsey. Um, we love the love. Speaking of, but yeah, exactly. We do. Let's just make that clear. Um, speaking of not belaboring the point, Andre Gray versus Mustafi in the 57th minute, cool. uh, hands up. If you think that was a penalty. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. You're picking up on uh, on on Andy's terms. Um, total penalty, and and that was the first hundred hundred and ten percent. Hundred and ten percent. You're up. You're upping your game. <laughs> first of many bonehead decisions from John Moss on the day. Yeah, he fucked up quite a bit in this match, but that it's just it's it's just blatant penalty. I don't understand how. It, it's because you, it's because he that. was going away from the from the play, but that should, I mean, that's that's the wrong it's the wrong call. But I yeah. I can only imagine that's the reason he didn't blow the whistle. I, I think my, it's two reasons. It's I think it's that, and I think it's the fact that it was in the box. Because I think if it's anywhere else on the pitch, even literally two feet away, he would have given the free kick. But the fact that it was in the penalty box, the, he's a nervous fucking ref, and he's just like. Mm. I, I don't want my reputation to go down. I don't want to go down to the championship like Mike Dean, so I'm just not going to give it. Yeah, well, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah he's this would have, Yeah, unlike Mike Dean, this would have been a penalty that you could have called that was inside the box. Well, so. and, uh, and I wondered to myself after the – like immediately after I was thinking, okay, if that was a Firmino or a Giroud or like an out-and-out striker that went down, is it different than it being our defender, Mustafi, who can be clumsy – I, I don't know. I was just wondering, you know, if it was like a Suarez, that's a penalty. Like, the ref is going to point to the spot. You would have I think to it, assume. I, no, I actually think it would possibly be the opposite. I think I think the clumsy is an argument – that is a good argument that I didn't think of. But, I mean, the, the thing is, though, with the attacking players is they know how to fall over. I don't True. think Mustafi's <laughs> practicing how, how he's going to take a dive or how he's going to overemphasize contact. So, for me, yeah, it's a stonewall penalty. Yeah, I, oh, I like AJ, I like AJ's yeah. point, Andy. AJ's right, man. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> the only person right. that's wrong in this podcast, Mike, is you. Yeah, well, I'm, if 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 I'm wrong, then who wants to be right? What do I love more than anything, Andy? Do you know? Broken gooses. Broken goose, AJ. Do you know? Um, what, well, what I love first more of all, than anything else, isn't it? Is, isn't it broken geese though? If, if, if <laughs> it's a broken plural. fucking duck, gentlemen. <laughs> There was a duck broken, almost two deeks bre- broke. <laughs> if that's, well, if it's geese, it should be deek for, for ducks. Oh, is that what? <laughs> Douchebag. But yeah, so uh, anyway, Mustafi, after very nearly uh, earning the penalty um, earlier in the, in the game, ends up uh, just a few minutes later, I believe, breaking his duck with a beautiful header that 
you kind of off the back of the head that you typically only see from from a Giroud. But uh, how about that goal for his first one off oh. of a, off of a set piece? No, it's excellent, man. And you know he fully deserved too because it didn't seem as though the goal was coming from a run in play, and so it was nice to see that it it went in like it did. And uh, he stepped up. You know, we'll, we'll probably might touch on this later, but. 21 games, 15 wins, zero losses when Mustafi's playing. That is ridiculous. It is. And, and, and every, you know, I remember saying at halftime of the Bournemouth game, I said, well, Mustafi's going to lose that streak. And, <laughs> you know, as poor as coming out of that game with a tie is, you know, as an overall outcome, there's something magic going on with Mustafi right now. I, totally. Totally. You, you, can't, you can't take him out of the lineup. And, that, and and a good friend of mine once called him the uh, the German Squalacci. Come on, Jer- I don't think Squalacci uh, ever was in a uh, twenty one game winning streak or or unbeaten streak personally. So, um, Jacques is red. Uh, we have to talk about it briefly. Our our, our good friend and, and longtime listener Justin Pierce sent us a, a, a quick, quick email saying, "I ask somewhat facetiously, why does John Moss hate Granite Jaka?" I Andy. You know, j- so Mike and I, okay, Mike and I had an argument via text. You almost broke up. We did. We always oh, said no. Sean Moss ruins games and he ruins friendships. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'll hand it over to AJ for a yes or no. Do you think it was a red card? Yes. Okay. I have to. Can I explain why though? No. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you just said yes or no. Okay. <laughs> yes. In, this, because, in seven words or less, please yeah. tell us. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Twitter okay. notific or Twitter things, hundred forty characters. All right, exactly. no. So I I do think it's a penalty just because that is what we see. I think personally, you know, it's a little. It's definitely not as bad as as other uh, studs in off the air tackles that we've seen before, like Rojo's one earlier mm-hmm. in the season. Yep. There have been much worse ones throughout every season that we've seen. But the problem is is that is kind of the rule for the past 10, 15, 20 years now. Uh, if you jump in two-footed off the ground, it's going to be a red. So the thing is, is like I, I've seen reds given where they don't even make contact, but it's just the, the malice intent. behind it. Yeah. yeah, the intent behind it. So yeah, for me, it is a red. And for me, it just pisses me off because... Yeah, people are saying, "Oh, we, you know, we've needed a hard tackler, somebody who has who has a lot more passion." But I don't think that's passion. I think that's just straight dumbassery, to be honest. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, he knows he knows that that's a rule. Uh, there's no way um, he, he hasn't knows been there's a, told and he that. knows there's a bounty on his head too at this point. And he, he knows there's have. a bounty on his head because of all these stats of how many reds he's gotten. Exactly. So I I, I don't know. It, it it really pisses me off that he did that. Because he's gonna miss that Chelsea game now. He he, I, I said this on on the full ninety Gooner pod. He's fucked himself over. Um, sorry, can I curse? Yeah, that... but uh, you already okay. said uh, fuck twice. You're actually not, okay. Just you're not sure. allowed not to curse on this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And dick jokes perfect. are totally acceptable. Uh, that's fucking perfect. Okay, <laughs> so and Andrew accepts any and all dick jokes. Yes, yes. All right, that's great. But but uh, <laughs> but but the thing is, is he screwed himself over because. He he was just starting to to play well in the team, and he was just starting to get um, him and Ramsey were just starting to form a good partnership. And earlier in the season, we saw him not get any game time. Now he's getting a lot of game time, and then he just goes and gets himself a four game suspension. It's like, dude, now Coughlin's going to come in the team, and now it's no guarantee that after your four game suspension, that spot is still there for you. Right. So like, it's dumb on his knew, own part too. We knew, we knew that Wenger kind of you know that that was his main you know that. And his maybe his fitness earlier in the season were his main reasons for not giving him more game time. Uh, why would there be any difference other than desperation because of lack of depth if someone gets hurt like Coughlin or Ramsey? Why would you you know you expect him to work his way back into the lineup again? I'm just worried about in training. Is he like two footed chopping people <laughs> down? <laughs> Freaking, he probably he probably got Santi right in the Achilles right. Right. I uh, I retweet. Out. I retweeted from our pod account a, a, a tweet that just had me rolling on the ground. Um, it's you know from one of those the many I can't remember which one. I wish I could give it credit, but it's uh, from one of the many you know Twitter accounts that just has f- ridiculous vines and hilarious Sunday League stuff. And it's, you know these two women talking to each other, and this guy just comes in 
just two footed and just takes the girl down. Yes, I've seen and that. They're like, yes. a, they're like in their living room or something like. Oh, it just it and it's like you know afternoon at the Jaka house or something like that. It was so funny. <laughs> so Mike, I just I I love that shit. I I I thought about it after we had our argument. Uh oh. Wait, who, who who's on whose side? Sorry, go I, ahead, Andy. I, I, okay, I want to so, hear. So I didn't think it was a red, and 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 uh, Mike thought it was a a blatant red, and then Eric from Chicago, who was also on the text group, kind of sided with me, and I think he was more in the orange color. But whilst I think it was a rash challenge, that's, Mike, that's shocking. He's, he sided with you, right? <laughs> whilst I think it was a rash challenge, for me, I'm still saying it wasn't a red, and this is why, right? Because if you look at the entire match as a whole. The referee was letting Burnley have some aggressive tackles. So if you're playing the game and you're reading the game and you're seeing what the ref is letting the teams get away with, while, yes, it was a bad challenge, Xhaka went in probably no worse than a couple other players on Burnley. You see Mustafi get challenged in the box when it wasn't a penalty. So if, if that's not a penalty, this can't be a red card. So after our debate, you know, I know I, I shared with you some of the so-called experts who were saying I still think it's a yellow, and John Mosh was probably looking at Jaka's reputation, and and you can't he can't make that decision based off of the reputation of Jaka. It's got to be off of the call. Now I know he went over to the alignsman, who probably had the view of the two foot, two or the stud showing. But I still think it it wasn't a red, and I think it's a yellow, and probably a hey, your next one is going to yeah. be another yellow. But I'm still le- relying on the whole like the referee let that match play out the way it did, and the Burnley players were getting stuck in, and he was just following suit. Now, does he have a hot head? Yes, and should he like take a minute, look in the mirror, and go? I'm on one of the world's biggest teams, and I do have a target on my back, 100%. Should Wenger be working with him on that? 100%. But did Ferguson, did Wenger really care when the Roy Keens and Patrick Vieira's of the world got into a challenge and, and were a little bit brash and rash? Not really, right? We, they, And obviously, they're legends at their clubs, but... From what we've seen from Xhaka, he's a hell of a player. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous all these fans keep saying, if he's going to keep doing this, he should be sold, uh, or we shouldn't have purchased him. And it's ridiculous ridiculous. because you can see the talent that he has. And as AJ said, we've been looking for a defender who comes in with passion. We just don't need someone with passion mixed with a hothead mentality. But... We've been dying to have a Petit or Vieira back at this club, and Jaka can be that player. He just needs to cool off a little bit. But, yeah. you know, he does need to read the game a little bit better. He does need to think down the, down the road. But it's so funny. People are like, well, it's probably good he didn't play against Chelsea because Costa would have destroyed him. It's like, well, no. That's he, his dumb person voice. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like at the end of the day, it's like he played against Tottenham, and he played a full 90 minutes, you know. And it's, it's like so, – What did he play? How many? He played full, full ninety. Yeah. Hey, it's weird. If there was only shout a out podcast, full ninety. <laughs> <laughs> we get no, paid extra for that one. I know I'm going on a tangent here, but in my opinion, the ref fucked up by allowing the game to go the way it did, and then the moment that challenge comes in, he just thinks, "Oh, it's Jaka. It was probably bad. I'm going to throw a red up." And so again, I think Moss is to blame, um, but I still see it as a yellow. And I think that this is a player that we're going to rely on in the next three to five years to be that great central midfielder that we've been dying to have. And there's way more pros than there are cons when it comes to Xhaka. I I agree with you on 90% of what you said. And, you know, in our brief and whirlwind podcast ship together, Andy, we haven't had uh, a whole lot of knockdown, drag out disagreements. And frankly, I don't think this is one either, other than the actual outcome. Um, I mean, I agree with just about everything you've said. I agree with just about everything that AJ said. Uh, the only difference is my my approach is not to look at uh, this in relation to other things. Although in game, <laughs> I agree there should be some consistency. Uh, but uh, you know, you got to look at each thing individually. Is this a red card challenge? Not is this a red card challenge given the earlier challenges and the later challenges. I, I just look at it as an independent event, and that's why I think it's a red all day. Um, and, and since I'm the tie-breaking vote, 
it, it is a red. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, your reputation shouldn't matter, but it does. Uh, studs up, two-footed tackles, almost a little bit of scissor action at the end. I mean, his leg was kind of out to the side. It came in after he made contact. Did he actually but, touch the guy, though? Did he? Yeah. Yeah, not, not a ton. Yeah, he but, made contact. But, yeah, he made contact, but not a ton. I mean, he he didn't break anybody's leg there, uh, but the the malice and the intent, like AJ said, was there. And and I I knew it was a red as soon as he you know as soon as he he Did started walking over to the and and I think that he had his mind made up and just went over to the linesman to make sure that he felt confident in showing the red. Did you guys uh, hear the? Were you guys at a pub or did you hear the NBC commentator? Uh, I was at NBC. home. So I did. Uh, yeah, I heard the. Uh, I think it was John Champion. Who was just like Thank- that was just a good challenge. <laughs> like that was, or commented <laughs> how like in the nineties that would have just been normal. Well, yeah, I've seen videos of Vinnie Jones going into people and and not getting called for a foul even. But your favorite Vinny. Um, DJ. But yeah, so now so now he's he's out for four games. We're gonna have Ramcock ram down our throats for the next four games, <laughs> and uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. But yeah, so. Not good, not good. Um, 70 minutes of the game after we'd been down a man for a few minutes, still up one nothing. It occurred to me that, like, however we got to that point, however disappointing and, like, that lingering just dread that you knew that we were just going to drop points from a leading position because this is what we do in these situations – I, you know, it, it, I just started thinking, okay, this is where we have the opportunity to buck that trend. I mean, we've done it a handful of times this season already, but, you know, this is where we show our mental strengths, what we're capable of, how we're different from the teams of the, of the last few years that are weak and kind of fold under pressure like this, even when they're not under pressure. And, and, and I'm, you know, I'm typing out tweets saying, this is the time, come on, let's go. And, and before I get to submit any tweets, there's the penalty. Mm-hmm. And yes, it takes me 20 minutes to write a tweet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there comes the penalty. And um, you know, the, the, to me about the penalty, the only thing I'll say is it was a penalty. But if you compare that play to the play the day before where Kyle Walker pushed Raheem Sterling, oh. if Raheem Sterling goes down, it's a penalty. No yeah. question. Um, What's his name on Burnley, uh, the, the guy who went down, Ashley Barnes, did not need to go down from that contact. He, he looked to go down, went to ground, and maybe if he didn't, it wouldn't have been called. And I think that, that's the ridiculous ludicrousness of, of you know, how they're trying to knock out diving in the game. They both should have been penalties. Um, but one guy didn't need to fall and got the penalty, and one guy probably should have gone down and was honest about it and didn't get the penalty. And that's just, you know, that's, uh, that's the bizarreness about, about how that, you know, you're not going to be able to get rid of diving when, when, when that's the way the calls go. But, uh, I mean, that was a penalty, right? Are, are we all yeah, yeah. thinking that oh, that's yeah. a penalty? Yeah. I mean, he kicked his leg out. He caught him in the shin. You're right. I mean, he could have probably run through that. It wasn't, it was kind of one of those where, you know, the cock got erect and then got limp real quick. <laughs> and But, yeah. He the cock made, slapped up Barnes on the, yeah, on the leg. On the shit. I mean, you know, and, and at the end of the day, he, like you said, he went down a little easily. But it's always a pen. It's always a pen. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. And, um, and you know, as soon as the penalty's called, you know it's 1-1. I mean, there's no, que- there's no reason to get your hopes up about any kind of, you know, penalty being saved. I'd love to know uh, when the last time Czech saved a penalty, because I can't recall oh, him saving a penalty. Not, not, not a single time for us. Not, not whatever, for us, for but us. like... Even whatever the equivalent of high school is in the Czech Republic. It was probably the <laughs> last time we played him when he was at Chelsea. That's when he last saved a penalty. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. He should just stand... Still, and everyone wait for the ball has to been down the him. middle this season. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. But uh, you know, so I'm instantly, you know, with all my promise and my "this is our moment" uh, attitude of 15 or 20 minutes of that game, it just all went to shit in one in one fell swoop, and I'm storming around the house, um, just in the worst possible mood. And barely watching the rest of the game, I know people who left the pub. That's you should be embarrassed of yourself. You know who you are. Rob. But, but uh, mm-hmm. no, but but uh, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, stroke of luck from the refs. Stroke it, of luck, maybe, or was it a makeup call? 
Well, you don't do a makeup call by not calling an offside. I, it, the contact was a penalty. Yeah, but it was offside. It, it's a tough offside because in the in the flow of the game, he's offside. He comes back, back. And goes back I, again. But I, I, yeah. you know what's funny to me, and we'll get to the penalty. But the amount of abuse the Manchester United fans started giving because we got an offside like not calling. I'm just thinking, are you fucking kidding oh me, United? Like, God. Half of your goals this season oh have come God. from being offside. So <laughs> two out of the four goals they've scored this season have yeah. come from offside. No, but, but but it's a it's a tough offside call to make, right? And if the ref had raised this flag, great. But within two seconds of him being offside, he's getting a boot in the face. So it's a it's a yeah. it's a it's a bad one for Burnley. But we're going to be on the end of it somewhere else. But hey, at the end of the day, we should have had a different penalty. So it all evens out, right? Yeah, and and um, yeah, but for Burnley, man, the second time this season on something like that, <laughs> both times involving Koscielny, and um, I would say you know you got to kind of feel for Burnley a little bit, but I'm going to rip uh, rip rip some words out from Jason Davies and say fuck them. Yeah, who gives <laughs> a shit? Doesn't <laughs> Just matter. His motto. Yeah, yeah, this is his motto. He's got uh, he's got uh, shoes with that written on the side, emblazoned in a in a jacket. Fuck them. But uh, but yeah, you know, I don't care. Uh, Burnley's not going down this season, I don't think. So, uh, so yeah, what, what oh, they're that? doing quite well. So I mean, yeah. yeah. What were those two points going to do for them, or, or one point? So um, so yeah, so two one strokes all over the country. People posting forward, ridiculous cheering things all over Facebook. It's a nice feeling. Uh, I'll take it. Um, Lost in that seven minutes, at least for me, because I was storming around the house trying not to break things. Was uh, was Arsene Wenger's shove? Mm-hmm. What do we What do we got there? What do we got there, Andy? Passion. Passion. I, I can only I can say that. I'll just say that in his in his voice because a little passion. We got the no. I mean, at, of the moment. What we've been asking, I, I suppose we've been asking for it. Right? We've been asking for that manager who gets up. Is boisterous on the sidelines. He was pissed off because there were there were moments in that match that that did not go our way, and you know it's 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 passion. And I'm I'm gonna say, Mike, what is the what should we place as a bet that Jose discusses arson in his next press conference? Because it's a guarantee that he's gonna bring up Wenger. And his yeah, next I'm not gonna conference. I'm not gonna take up that bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no question, uh, and 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 especially if if Wenger, I mean Wenger is going to get. A ban, whether it's a game, two games, or like I've seen some ridiculous projections of six or more games to to, to basically draw a line in the sand about making contact with an official. Um, but he's yet, gonna it's get okay for Barnes to get in the face of the official on the pitch after he awards us with a penalty. And if you've seen the picture in the freeze frame, he's literally kissing the referee on the mouth because <laughs> he's so close, screaming at him. Yet he sees no retribution from it. So um, what's the FA going to yeah. do? Because this whole abusing the officials is Well, yeah, the people control. crowding around the ref thing just, yeah. felt, just completely fell out of and, the whole uh, – you know, the captain can be the only one that runs up to the ref. That's gone. Right, and if you're going to, <laughs> yeah. if you're going to put these refs on a pedestal, then they have to answer after the match in a press conference. Why did you make this call? What did you see? What did the players say? What did you hear? They can't just get scot free to leave oh, all the that, time. That'll be the new thing where where refs after the game get get yeah, uh, they into have press to go to a press conference. <laughs> it, it I would just, love that. It, You're never going to see that. You're but, never going to see that. No, you won't. But that. it's not fair, and, and their jobs aren't easy. But there there has to be some sort of of report that has to come out then, so we know as fans what he saw, why he made the calls, because it's bullshit otherwise. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But as far as Wenger's concerned, you know, first of all, credit to him for his passion. Uh, I like, I, you know, it, we have criticized him for not being a little, you know, and it's just we don't want him to be someone other than who he is. But uh, we just kind of wish who he was was different. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah. you know, it's just a little bit more passion, a little bit more fire, a little bit more, you know, not to the point where it looks contrived and ridiculous. But, you know, this is where you see the passion from him. I mean, the, uh, you've, he loves to shove people. 
He does. Especially, I mean, he loves he loves the passion towards the fourth official. I mean, he does that at least in every game. But yeah, but I mean, uh, but yeah. for such a respectful professor type and you know above the fray type of image that he has, he loves to shove people around, man. And and I I, I couldn't be happier about it because the people he chooses to shove around usually deserve the fuck out of it. But mm-hmm. but um, yeah, he, he's going to miss a few games. And and I'll tell you, it's an interesting time for him to be out for two to four games maybe is what I'm guessing. I'm, I would say three um, if that happens because, you know, we've all been kind of wondering what it would be like without Wenger on the sidelines, whether it's, you know, permanently going forward or whether, you know, and, and um, be interesting to see what the team has. I certainly hope it doesn't come, you know, hurt us and, and hurt our opportunities to progress to the next round of the FA Cup and in the Premier League. But, uh you know, some people are going to get their wish and see someone other than Wenger on the sidelines, and and I can hope. I can only hope it works out. The only problem that I well, I mean, obviously it's not good um, when your manager is is not on the on the sideline. But for the people who who want Wenger out, um, my only thing to say to that is is this isn't an indication at no. all of how it's going to be like when Wenger is gone. I mean, of course, all, yeah. it's still all his. Yeah, it's still all his tactics. It's still all his. Um, training and planning before the head of the um, before the game but the only thing that i would say is going to be different is that instead of him sitting there maybe occasionally getting up and screaming something or uh, yeah i don't even know if he ever screams but um you'll probably he, he, see he waves his arms yeah yeah exactly and you know i'm, do, I'm doing the, the thing right the now zipper. you can't see this but <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna but, uh, who's gonna try but, and uh, zip up a long jacket while he's while he's not on the sideline Oh, maybe Thierry Henry could have know. done that if he was hired as, although he would have been a youth coach, not a assistant coach. But yeah, I mean it. It'll be interesting. I, I hope it's not a long. I mean, as long as he's our, our manager, and and uh, I, I want him to be managing uh, and not you know, banned from the touchline. But it's uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see because I certainly think he's going to miss some time. And he came out and he apologized for it. He was a man, um, and uh, you know so. Nothing but respect for him for that. Uh, you know, he certainly can understand him being upset. Uh, in the end, it's a massive three points. I mean, we could whine about John Moss. We could whine about, you know, only beating Burnley at home 2-1 and that they've never, you know, they haven't gotten more than one point on the road all year and we almost gave them another one. But, I mean, what's the point? It, it, Swansea beats Liverpool. Uh you know, Burnley beat Liverpool, I think. Burnley beat Liverpool Whoa. early this season. But, I mean, just this weekend, Swansea beat Liverpool. Stoke takes a point off of United. Uh, you know, it, 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 crazy things happen. And so any win, any way is good. And, it, it, you know, we're, we're in second at the table. We fought until the very end and pulled it off. So however it happened, well done to the Arsenal. So I'll ask you guys this because around Christmas we saw – the opposite, right? We were dropping points, all the other teams were losing, and we felt like, okay, we're not going to catch. And we're, we jumped from fifth to second. So I'll go to AJ with, with the first response to this. Are we in a great position right now, or are Chelsea just too far away? Are they out of, are they out of, are we just not within reach? Yeah, are we, are we leading the, are we leading the lapped lane right now? It, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's they're just within reach, but let's just say, um, like Mike was talking about, to, it all comes down <laughs> to the fourth, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like, I mean, like, like you were saying fourth, when you were when, when you were freaking out about um, uh, after Burnley got that penalty and scored and scored their penalty. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, in, in that time period, I was messaging the full ninety Grutner. Um, whatsapp group saying well there's the title gone because i do think if we had tied that game and obviously we didn't know at the time but chelsea go on to win against hull 10 point gap i think would have been too much i know uh, we've done it against united many years ago and i know we've done it against tottenham last season to get second but i i don't know it maybe maybe that's what we say about every season but it just seems like this chelsea team is just on fire right now and i think I think if we can beat them, obviously, you know, that's the typical cliche six-pointer um, that we can get. But I think they're they're just barely within reach. I think if we slip, it, meaning we draw or, or lose and they win, uh, and in the next few games, I do think we'll, we'll be out of reach at that point. 
And I think we have to beat them and hope for a little bit of luck because what's getting ready to happen in about three weeks is we're going to start having a game in the middle of the week every week that they don't have. Mm -hmm. And, and it, you know, you, you don't catch a team from 10 points back when you're playing twice as many games as them. You can lose a 10 point lead when you're doing that, but you can't catch somebody, I don't think. And, and, you know, that's the biggest thing for me is that we're far behind them and have, so many more games than they do. Well, let's be honest; it might be two more games than them to play. But, <laughs> right. but, but I mean, it, we just have that 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 distraction—a good distraction, but a distraction nonetheless—that they don't have. And um, so that that's what concerns me. I agree with you. If we hadn't taken all three points, uh, there'd be no hope in my mind of us catching them. Now there's a slim hope. Uh, after the fourth, there'll either be a growing hope or no hope left anymore. Well, so they so they play Liverpool before us. So they play Liverpool on the thirty first, and then then us on the fourth. So, you know, if all goes well, Liverpool grab three points, and we continue to win, then we clo- and we beat them. We close that gap to two. Uh, but that would, yeah, that's I, an ideal situation. I, I think that you know anything other than a win against Chelsea on the fourth, then yeah, the title. The title is theirs, and then I, I honestly think between now and uh, May, we're not going to know who's going to finish between second and fifth. I mean, this is just going to be like probably oh, it's like, going to be the last week of the season. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I think out of all the teams in there, Spurs, and, and I'm not just saying this because we're an Arsenal podcast, but they have now had injuries to their, I mean, uh, two best center backs. They're probably the team that are going into the next couple of weeks thinking shit, because their top two center backs are both out, and they're, the, they're top two center backs and their referee. <laughs> true, <laughs> they're, true. They're well really, done. Mike. They're really short right now. Yeah, but we got to take advantage of that. You know, I mean, we're we're lucky you. right now. So let's fingers crossed. But let's go back to the match. So, uh, boys, um, who are your man of the matches? Uh, for me, it's it's uh, it's Mustafi. I mean, Kustafi really kind of did well in the game, as far as I was concerned. But I mean, the the Mustafi element, a goal, almost earned a penalty, just solid, solid defensive play in the back. He won uh, nine aerial balls in that game. Uh, the next highest on the pitch was was four, three, and then everyone else with two and one. Um, I mean, he he just he was a rock in the defense and, and you know, Ramsey had a good game. Ozil, I think played well. Um, and Gabriel, man, Gabriel's our new backup right back. I will take him any day of the week that Hector's unable to play. I will take mm-hmm. him at right back. AJ, but, who's uh, the man of the match? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think Mustafi is a good shout. It's so funny because I, I, I literally have been thinking just silently, luckily, but now I'll reveal my uh, dumbassness right now. But I, I, I have, I've been thinking like, you know, Mustafi's what only six foot tall, probably doesn't, doesn't seem that tall. And I'm like, I'm like, damn, you know, in the air, he's not that good. Like there are a few times when we played against big uh, strikers that I've, I've found a little, I've been a little nervous when we have Koscielny in and Mustafi. Cause I think we're used to having that murder stacker, six foot seven guy who's going to head the ball out. But, uh, but then I'm, 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 goes I'm sorry. On. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because uh, I just every time someone says that, I have this vision from the upper clock end seats of Mitrovic jumping over uh, Murdersacker easily in a Champions <laughs> League game to tie it, to tie it back up at three three. So I, I I just love when people talk about how good he is in the air. And yeah, he's good in the air. But but I mean, we'll talk so about his actual Mertes- vertical jumping is not is not. Uh, the best, but I mean, yeah, but he, he's still is like five ten, though. I mean, this is ridiculous. but yeah, you're right. Yeah, though, yeah, but per, per but jumps he, like an inch off the ground. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. But then fucking Mustafi goes on and scores a header and gets nine uh, <laughs> aerial duels, wins nine aerial duels in the game. So shows how much I know. But I, I'd probably say uh, I'd probably say Ozil for me, just because I think he, since he's come back from his illness and even a little before his illness, he he wasn't really um performing to what he did last season and to what he did earlier in the season when he was scoring a lot of goals um but i thought i thought he he definitely slotted into that uh number 10 role perfectly in this last game and he was doing a lot more creating um which is not what we've necessarily seen from him as much this season so i think i think it's positive i think that was on the right track plus all his dead ball situations were absolutely fantastic i mean he he really 
he really had some good corners, good free kicks. So definitely, uh, I, I think I put Ozil there. Welcome back, Mesut. Yeah, I, 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 I think I would have went down the same path, Mike, uh, Mustafi, uh, for my man of the match. And I also was going to give a shout-out to Gabriel. I thought he was incredible. And I just love dude's passion. Whenever we, I, like, oh claw a goal back or, you know, he's just, he's just doesn't necessarily run to the group of players, but he just absolutely loves <laughs> – just a fucking goal going in, and I, I, I just. Do you I, see? Have you seen that picture that he posted, yes. and like everybody else's post? Oh yes. my god! I mean, he looks like a fucking gorilla who's about to just attack yes. a family. I mean, it's, it's like I, I, I love it. He straight up looks like he hasn't eaten in like yeah. ten days, and he's just about to just ravage all sixty thousand fans in yeah. the in the crowd. But, oh my god, that's that's I, fucking hilarious. <laughs> I wanted to give a an, uh, an honorable mention. I thought Awobi was having a fucking great game until, obviously, we had to make the tactical change. But I was really impressed with how he was growing into the match. And yeah, his, um, his his passing was was much better than than I think what we've seen yeah. in, in the past games. And I, I was that- just a little bummed that we didn't get to see him play the the full ninety guys. Hey. Um, <laughs> But no, I, I I really thought he played really well. Oh, 94, and, 94, 94. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> so no, but like, it was just awesome to see us grab those three points because I know we say it, but last season that would have ended in a draw. We or we yeah. we, we might have lost two one. Yeah, in we might. I mean, just, we I mean, the, the the penalty would have been the, the the second goal after giving up a goal five minutes after the red card. I mean, it's just it was so 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 predictable, which is why I felt like you know anything other than that, and we, we this was a major victory, and and um, you know it wasn't the way I planned it out. I was looking for a one nil ending, but uh, but you know just yeah. fine. And 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 the point at the, la- the the finishing touch on this game, unless you guys have something else, is point right after the whistle blows where the camera just zoomed in on Alexis. Two minutes off of his, you know, off of his Panenko game-winning penalty, which we didn't even discuss, but it is what it is. I think he saw the the goaltender dive before he really made the final final decision to Panenka it. So I think it was actually not so risky. Uh, but he, he zooms in on him. He's looking to the corner, probably at his banner, and we'll talk about the banner in a minute. Um, Sixty thousand people singing his song after a game-winning goal. I mean, if he. If if he needs to feel loved and appreciated, uh, he better as hell remember that moment. Um, he looked like he was on the verge of tears, and then Giroud comes over, and they just have the most adorable man hug, and and uh, I mean that it, juxtaposed, juxtaposed, I think, with how he was last week uh, at the end of the game. I mean. It, it puts a cap on the whole controversy about his reaction last week, I think. But Or does it mean that the only way he ends the game happy is if he wins the game in the 90-plus 90 minute of the game? With because him scoring. Other, yeah, because otherwise, you know, he's either been taken out of the game or he could have scored and he ends up mad. I mean, it, but it, I just really was very encouraged by that moment on TV. Yeah, very. we'll get to that with the banner. Um yeah, I can't wait to get to that. I got a little bit of a take so, that will so, shock and disturb people. No. He wants his dogs drowned. So moving no, on no. to uh, non-game. So Mike, NAJ, because you're both American, an American has joined Arsenal's first team, except it's on the women's side. Mrs. Heather O'Reilly, who has won yes. the World Cup and Olympics with the U.S. has signed an 18-month contract. This is what I found absolutely ridiculous. She's made 231 appearances for her country. I mean, that is ridiculous. That is amazing. I am getting close, but I have not made 231 appearances in my country, <laughs> much, le- much <laughs> less for my country. I mean, I, uh, there's only 229 people that have ever seen me leave my house. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, it's great news. She's an amazing player. She's had an incredible career, and obviously, even at 32, she's got a- enough left in the tank that you know if the Arsenal has come for her, because Arsenal ladies are no joke. Uh, you know, congratulations to her. Congrats to Arsenal for picking up a class player in the January transfer window. And I think that's probably the only time we'll be able to say that this year. Maybe. But uh, that's excellent news. No, it's great. Excellent news. AJ, no, you yeah. a fan? You fan? No, or you yeah. Fan? 
<laughs> no, no, no. I'm AJ, really just going to tell us why this is a horrible move. AJ, <laughs> over to you. It's a terrible move because uh, Heather O'Reilly's crap. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's a great move, and it's it's an interesting one because I'm not. I you know well, I should say I'm I'm not. I don't know that much. I know our Arsenal ladies are very good. Um, I, I would be interested to see the difference between the uh, the Premier the women's Premier League in uh, England compared to the uh, women's soccer league in the United oh, States. I would be God. interested to see what the actual difference is in class because obviously I think we can say U.S. is uh, women's team. I think it's synonymous probably uh, league to league as the Premier League to the MLS. Yeah. Um, well, do, I, do you think so though? I'm not sure because I mean if, if you think about the U.S. national team versus the English national team, I would say the U.S. women's national team is, is stronger than the English National. Yeah, I, I I think it's probably an issue of depth in the in the league. Yeah, uh, I, I I agree with you on that. I think that probably the best players. Um, yeah, I mean, I without without going too deep into something that I truly have no <laughs> qualifications to make any judgments on. Yeah, um, I I think that the top players in the you know and uh, in the NWSL I believe um, are you know the world class players. There's there's no other league that has better players from the U.S. in their league. But, um, you know, I, I would imagine that the 10th, 11th, 12th players on each squad is probably not as pedigreed as the 10th, 11th, 12th players are um, in in either the women's uh, Premier League or in the regular Premier League compared to MLS, if that makes any sense. I do uh, know but I could be completely wrong. No, and I, I do know because I not I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm, I'm friends with her, but um, Lindsay Horan, who is from Colorado and played for the club that I coach for, often shows up to training sessions where we train because she trains with like our national U18 men's team um, just to stay in shape. And she was commenting to some of the girls that I coach that a lot of the U.S. national team players came back to the WASL, I think it's called, um, this past summer because they wanted to have more exposure to make the Olympic team. Um, One of us looks dumb now because we just called it two different yeah. things. Uh, yeah, so whatever it's called. I mean, obviously Mike and I weren't marching this past weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, but I couldn't get up. The, I couldn't literally physically couldn't get up off the couch. <laughs> so, it's not that I couldn't be bothered. It's that I physically can't get up off the couch. Yeah, but let's just be – I mean, I think it's fair to say, and I think you two will both agree with me, that our women's team would probably be half the men's teams in the MLS. The women's uh, national team? No, the yeah. women's Arsenal team would be oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. half oh. the teams in the MLS. <laughs> Either way. Yeah. AJ at first was like, yeah, that's good. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, great news for Arsenal. A uh, couple of re-signings this week. Um New one-year renewals for Per Mertesacker and Santi Cazorla. I got some opinions on this, um, and and I've I've been listening very with with interest to a lot of the other podcasts since we're probably recording last in this kind of weekly round of podcasts, um, and following on Twitter. And I, I've heard vast majority happy about these resignings. Andy, what do you think? So I haven't read or know your thoughts um, because I know that you <laughs> – My thoughts are, are published every yeah. day in the USA His today. memoirs. Um, so here, here's how I feel. The Santee position I think is excellent. Um, I think he still has a lot to offer. I feel like he could be a Paul Scholes type of player where maybe he doesn't come on and play – the full match, but he can definitely contribute. And you avoided make, saying full ninety. Uh, so uh, yeah, I was. Well, we, we we'll edit. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll edit that. Plus, yeah, you only said we had to do it six times. <laughs> right, that's all we've been paid for. <laughs> yeah, but no, I think that Santi can offer a lot, and even if he comes on for the last thirty, um, he's still going to make a contributing factor. The per one, I'm on the fence with, and I'm hoping that the one year renewal is more for the leadership. I don't think he gets into the squad in front of Gabriel or Holding, but I feel like you know we need to have these senior players in that locker room because we do have a lot of young young players, and I'm hoping that's more of the put your arm around Holding, put your arm around Gabriel, and Mustafi's not that old. I mean, dude looks old, but he's still what 25, I think. 24, even I think. Yeah, maybe. so like I I feel like that one is more on the leadership side of things. 
But I, I feel like the Santee, dude, Pirlo is still playing. And Santee is a great player and has unbelievable skill. And if he could stay healthy, I think he's got another did, three or four years in him. Did Pirlo do his ligaments twice in a, uh, two years in a row that's when he I was in his lower third? That's why I said if he stays healthy, Mike, listen to, the well, fucking, yes. listen to what well, I'm that, saying. <laughs> Michael. Come on, man. Yeah, no. Th- <laughs> well, this is the whole situation here is made relevant because of their health over the last two seasons. I mean, I, I'm concerned, and I don't necessarily feel the same way about both of them. But I mean, both these guys are winners. I mean, perhaps not, uh, you know, with Arsenal as far as Premier League or Champions League is concerned. But you know, FA Cups, their country, uh, their attitudes. They're both winners. They're both amazing teammates. They're likable guys. But they're both 32, 33 years old, um, and their bodies seem to be breaking down. Now, does it mean they'll never be fully fit again? No, but once, twice in a row, two seasons, it's, it's, it's alarming to me. And how much we're paying them is a bit of a concern to me. I mean, Mertesacker is on 70000 a week for the next year, and that's for a fourth or fifth choice center back. I mean, don't forget Ch- uh, Callum Chambers is coming back next year, yeah. uh, who's coming off of two years of injuries, and he wasn't fast to begin with. And, you know, people talk about his positional awareness and influence in the locker room, and, and, and I don't devalue those things. It's, I think it's important to have that in your squad. But for 70000 a week, and his positional awareness, like I said before, it didn't look that great to me during the Anderlecht and the Monaco games over the last few years. Uh, it just seems like a lot of money to commit to somebody whose primary influence on the team is off the field. I mean, that's to me, that's kind of what coaches are for. And, and I know you need someone who you can you – can, you know, kind of buddy up with who's a player and knows what you're going through rather than a ex player who's now coaching. But I think Steve Bold makes about 30,000 a week, uh, as the assistant coach. Uh, you know, I, I just think that Per must have some video footage of Wenger, uh, Wenger and Gazidis doing some unsavory things. Uh, cause, <laughs> you know, with him not even back to full health yet, uh, yeah. Yes, they had to pull the trigger on the extension if they wanted to extend him guaranteed at 70000 rather than possibly lose him on a free. But there was nothing stopping them from renegotiating and say, Per, we'd love to have you back. But at you know, thirty, forty thousand 40000 a week, given you know, where things are, we value you. We, we might want you on our coaching staff later. Um, and you know, if he says no to that, then you know, he's off to, to Werder Bremen and uh, you know, we go after another uh, – you know, backup center back that might have some leadership abilities as well and isn't going to be, you know, looking for for 70,000 a week. Per will be making more than Nacho, Kieran Gibbs, Ox, Gabriel, Lucas, El Nani, Iwobi, and of course Rob Holding who's on his first contract of 10,000 a week, but all those guys are going to see a heck of a lot more time on the field and contribute a lot more than Murdesacker is and it just, you know, I love the man, but I just don't think this is this is kind of a sign of, of, of the Arteta and Fl- Flamini thing where we're holding on to these guys and it's possibly keeping us from bringing other guys in earlier. Um, and it was just a little too loyal to players who don't have it anymore. And that's just kind of where I am on that. Because Zorla, if he stays healthy, uh, I love the move. If, if he stays healthy and comes back next season fitter than ever, um, fit enough to, to, to play you know 70% of the games, then even at 32, he, he's he's worth the money. But Murder Sacker, I just don't get. Would you? Am I being uh, a, am I being a dick? No, I don't think yes. you are. But AJ, <laughs> am I holding too? Am I holding too strong of a of a of a grudge against Germany? AJ, would I mean, you what? rather would you rather resign Per or give his seventy thousand to Ozil and or Sanchez? Oh, okay. Well, that I think changes things a bit. I think I think if if us not, signing. That, that, okay. you know, all, of a sudden I'm, all of a sudden, I'm worried about our <laughs> weekly wage bill, you know, but, but it's because we have competing, you know, if we can afford to just splash cash to everybody, that's fine. But I do look at it in that context. So I'm glad you brought that up, Andy. That, I, I you gave it's... me an opportunity to interrupt AJ for the ninth time on, in the last <laughs> 10 minutes. I'm very, very sorry. But that's no, full 90. Total. That is full 90. <laughs> yes, we're, we're making up. Full 90. <laughs> Dude, trust me, you're totally good. But no, um, uh, I do think it's a good move that we that we re-sign Um and and I think to to answer your fears or question about you know do we think re-signing or or do we think that seventy k going to Murdersacker is now not going to go to Ozil and Alexis? 
I don't think it has anything to do with they don't have 70k. I think we could we could pay Ozil and Alexis 400, 500k a week if we wanted to. But the thing is, is and obviously I know I know that's astronomical. But even if we wanted to do what or what around they were talking about the 200 to 250 range, we could do that. But like you said, the problem is there are too many players. Breaks the wage structures. Yeah, it breaks the wage structure. There's too many players on way way less money that it's not even close to being fair. So I, I don't think I don't think it's the fact that we don't have enough money to pay these players. I just think that we're worried that we're going to have to increase everybody's wages if we increase Ozil uh, and Alexis's wages. And to to go on your point about like, do I want or do I think it's a good thing that we sign Murdersacker? I do think it's a good thing because. We could. I, I I see your point that we could bring in another experienced player to have uh you know quote unquote leadership qualities. But we saw with Sylvester, we saw with Squillacci, <laughs> you know, older doesn't always mean better. But the thing is with Murdersackers, he's been at the club for six years now. He knows the club. Everybody loves him at at, at Arsenal. Um, he he can help teach the younger guys. I know that that you're, t- you're, you're right. Turning, you're turning me around, AJ. I'm starting. Yeah, I'm yeah. starting to love this move right now. <laughs> It's the best move ever. Freaking sign him for 200k a week now. Dude, let, let, let's just have well, a whole German Gallo, signing day, like the French signing day. We but, should have a whole German signing day now and just throw Ozil in there. With Mustafa. But, oh, yeah. To, to add to what AJ was saying, also think about if you bring in another player, you bring him in for maybe 40 or 50, he's itching to fight for that starting position. And so now you've got five or six young center backs and then – and a transfer fee, and I'm not, and well, I wasn't well, allowed. But, to but into, on, no, well, I'm just saying. Just, yeah, also no, have to pay yeah, a yeah. Fee. But then you're also looking at unrest in the locker room because you've got five, six guys who are fighting for two positions, and ultimately we've got two great center backs that are going to be playing the majority of the matches. When you resign Per, you've got an okay ability to add to depth, but you don't have someone who's knocking constantly or creating. Uh, rage in the locker room because they're not playing. You've got a guy towards the end of his career who loves a club who may come back to us as a coach. So you got to think of that too. And Wenger's probably thinking, all right, I could bring someone else in, spend some money, or I've got this guy who I can rely on if I need who's not going to cause unrest because he's not playing 35 games a season. And, yeah. and especially oh, well. because it, he would be, he's a good, because I think, I think even though I, I really love old, uh, or young Bobby Holding, and I do like Callum Chambers, who's out on loan. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited to see him when he gets back. But but the thing is, is I think right now Wenger still puts Murdersacker as third or fourth fourth choice center back, even even possibly third above Gabriel, just because I, I think he loves he, just because he loves Murdersacker that much. But the thing is, is if he's let, let's just say he's fourth choice, he's here for one more year. He probably will go at the end of the year. Uh, I wouldn't imagine he would sign another one after that, um, or or he retires. Um, and and I, I think it just gives another year to help teach the younger guys. And the fact that he doesn't really care about his playing time, it means that if we do bring in Holding or we do bring in Chambers at any moment, and I start having a mare and can't handle the pressure, then we would just bring in Murder Soccer for one or two games, and mm-hmm. he just slots in and, and does a good job. I I I don't think. I don't think I wouldn't worry about the 70k. I think Arsenal have enough money. Yeah, and and it's like I've been saying all along. I mean, these these are two good signings. I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, well done to Arsenal. And, uh, <laughs> You've been saying all along. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, I mean, I've always literally, been, I've always literally, been a fan of Per. You know, I I I I don't come out with the strongest opinions. I'm known for being a little wishy washy on things, but uh, this was one of the stronger opinions I've had, and I've just been completely talked out talked out of it. So credit to both of you for uh, for raising some good points, and I've just kind of rethought about it. And uh, you know. now, that being said, uh, if in March we're in the hunt and in the Premier League and the Champions League, and and per Merisacker out on the field. I'm gonna be nervous as fuck. Nervous AF, as as the kids say these days. AJ, you, yeah. you know, you're, you're well. You're I'm well. Twenty, you're in, twenty. Yeah. You know, we're we're yeah. on the older side now, but I'm no. more than <laughs> twice your age. So yeah, you're you're old and legs and knees, but um, then your hangovers, which I don't even want to begin talking about. Mine, oh but. my god, it's so bad. I- I don't know how you guys are gonna how you guys deal with it. I'm not looking suck, forward to the next. Suck it, AJ. Yeah, as Jason would say, fuck off. Because I, I have five day long hangovers after one bad night of drinking. So it's, it's this is what you have to look forward to. Um, so uh, Bannergate. Uh, 
Fun, harmless attempt to give Alexis a cuddle or embarrassing suck up deserving of mockery by both our supporters and others. Um, AJ, what do you think? I think it's absolutely beautiful. Look, it, it, it's supposed to be a joke, though. You know, I don't think, I don't think the red action when they put out this banner were, were really thinking. You know, like, oh, this symbolizes Arsenal, and this is what it means. I think it's just, it's just funny because it's just red one of the things you kind of have flack on Twitter. Yeah, well, yeah, and that too. But I mean, but it's Arsenal. You have to, it would anything we do is going to catch flack from half of our fans. That's basically, true. I mean, hey, we do have the biggest. Uh, social media following though, so right. that's good and bad, I guess. But, but yeah, no, I, I, I just think it's a little bit of fun. I love it, and clearly, uh, Alexis loves it because he posted a photo on on his Instagram and and on his uh Adam and Humber dog Instagram <laughs> that he has. <laughs> so yeah. it's all positive for me. What do, what do you think? I, I, I'm I completely agree with AJ. I think it's fun and it's harmless. And look, Mike. Sanchez knows we want him to stay, and I'm sure the banner is just giving him smiles and proves it just proves he's loved, right? And it's <clears throat> it, excuse me, it is it, it's just funny. He came out in the press and said the right things last week that you know he loves Arsenal, he loves our fan base, and he wants to stay. And you know I, we talked about it a little bit before, but my biggest fear with him is we do let him leave for 50k, 70k because we don't want to break our weight structure. <laughs> 70k. <laughs> But, Where did that 70k come from? No, I'm just I know, <laughs> but as far as the banner gate goes, it's a you know what? It's funny. We're, we're we are so desperate for this guy to stay. Everyone who's a fan of Arsenal wants him to stay. There's no fan that would say, "Oh, he's replaceable" because he isn't. This is just one of those like funny things because dude loves his dogs. Yeah, it, it, it's it's hilarious. I, it I mean, is. I, I I can't. You, you just got to be. You know, and, and I got to measure my words here, but I mean, you you you, you kind of want to look for something to complain about if you and 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 look, I I don't I didn't grow up in North London, um, I I don't have forty five to fifty years of being a, a, a an Arsenal supporter. I, I you know I've got twenty five, uh, but you know not straight through. And and and, and it, there's nothing. I just, I just did a podcast sigh, by the way. I, I've noticed listening to every podcast that that's a common thing. You, you, you just go, you're like, <laughs> when you when you're trying to make a point, everybody does it. It's hilarious. But um, now you will never never not notice it again when you're listening to podcasts. But it's it's funny. I mean, it, it's hilarious. And dude, dude likes to be loved. And we're not like going over and just being ridiculously obsequious with it. It's a funny banner. Um, you know, and, and and yeah, apparently he put it on his dog's Instagram account. I have no clue about Instagram. Um, you know, if it, in my world, he would have faxed pictures of it to everyone that he knows. Uh, but my son this is flip phone. Yeah, this is this is my uh, this is my concern, uh, and this is just something you're just not getting from other podcasts and, and the the so-called experts. But good boys, are, are, are we sure about that? I mean, really? I mean. They, has anyone done their due diligence on these dogs at all, besides knowing what their names are and what their breed is? I mean, I, from everything I can tell, Adam is a top, top dog. I mean, the best, the, you know, cream of the crop. But the, some of the research on Humber, man, I mean, Just I'm a pulling, little... You don't like what you're finding? It's, it's not adding up. And which I'm, I'm digging which? into I, I don't have a fucking clue. Um, but what has Humber ever done for Arsenal? I mean, how do we know that Humber... Fucking Humber is not a spy for PSG or or Chelsea or City. <laughs> there is a, the the blonde one, the lighter one. I'm looking on. His, I'm one. looking on the uh, the the Instagram right now. Twenty weeks ago, the blonde one was wearing an Arsenal scarf uh, with the cannon on it. Well, that was probably Adam, because so, you know we don't know what Humber's up to. How, we don't know that Humber wasn't behind last week's on field tantrum that he had, or the the on the sideline tantrum and his shenanigans. No one's checking this out. I mean, dude, there are some funny pictures on it. You guys are definitely. <laughs> well, what, oh, yeah, 20, I follow in, it. I follow in twenty it. years, when I get Instagram, I'll check it out. But I, I'm just going to come right out and say it, man. <laughs> Fuck Humber. Whoa. Oh. All right. Whoa. I, I, I know what you're up to, dog, and I don't like it. Whoa. Cut it out, Humber. Bad dog. <laughs> Whoa. You, you may have male genitalia under there, punk ass, but to me, <laughs> you'll always be a bitch. <laughs> that, uh. That being said, wow. I love dogs. Wow. I love dogs. So this will be our last ever podcast. Um, no. Alexis 
<laughs> Hashtag Alexis leaves Arsenal after hearing <laughs> Gunnar no, in the USA. Now, now, I'm, now I'm not I'm not saying I'm not putting Humber in the same category as Arlo, but <laughs> oh that fucking asshole. Yeah, but um, should yeah. we move on, Mike? Should we go to listener <laughs> questions? We have hit rock bottom I again. Just, I, I'm just saying we need to do our due diligence here, and people just latch onto things way too easily. So. Yeah, listener questions. Now we are uh, running a little long, so I don't know how yeah. you want to handle these. Uh, well, we, we are pushing Trousty uh, forward to next uh, week again. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Trousty, but uh, we want to dedicate the right amount of time to your questions. We have some leftover questions about soccer in America uh, and the whole experience. But uh, Maybe next week we'll uh, go to his questions first. Yes, maybe we will do that, as a matter of fact. Uh, Jimmy, uh, at NN Gooner. Uh, has more of a rhetorical question than an actual question, which is, do you think the reason Harry Kane never closes his mouth is because if he did, he'd forget to breathe through his nose and suffocate? <laughs> I would... <laughs> That's so terrible. Dude looks so much like Beavis or Butthead. I don't know which oh, one's God. which. Like the humble, yeah. the humble Adam thing, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'd oh, certainly like the opportunity to find out if he would suffocate. But uh, do, so, do we think? Uh, is that? A, I guess this is more of a yes or no question. But uh, what do you think, AJ? <laughs> would he suffocate if he closed his mouth? Yeah, I think so. I think it's something to do with his like fat tongue too, or something. I'm not really sure. He's just got he's got a weird mouth in general. I'm not really sure what what his dentist thinks of the, about that. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well. I, I didn't know that he knew what a dentist was, but <laughs> second and last question of the week, uh, Justin Trujillo, another one of your posse, Andy, uh, asks, as a multinational podcast, and yes, we are in 59 countries now, apparently, um, what's your take on dual nationals? Should EPL teams have a limit on foreign players? And I don't know if there's oh, two questions yeah. there that are unrelated, but... Uh, sounds like you've heard this kind of a question from Justin before. <laughs> no, not from Justin, but well, you know, it's funny because I become a dual national on Saturday next week. I know that's why I wanted to hear your take. Oh, um, it happened. What? It happened. Yeah, I got to drink the blood of Trump, and then I apparently I become a U.S. citizen. Wow. Yeah. So you will be allowed back in the country tomorrow. I, I'm not sure. I'm still coming in on my British passport, so we'll see. And I'm still holding the British passport, Mike, because. When that revolution comes, I gotta be ready. <laughs> the, re- the reverse revolutionary war. So, this has been a debate for years, and 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 really, the, there's a quick answer to this question: No, because if you limit foreign players, the EPL becomes less of a league, and we all know it's about dollars and bringing the best players to England is what it's all about. Will it help the England national team? Probably, because you're allowing more homegrown national kids to grow up and and have an opportunity. But that's not what it's about. It's about money. So I don't think the EPL should have a limit on foreign players. At the end of the day, we want to see the best of the best. And unfortunately, we're now going and competing with the likes of China. I think that experiment won't last very long. But no, we want to see the best players. So quick and easy, I don't think there should be a limit. Was there at one time a limit? I, I seem to recall some sort well, of three or four player foreign limit, like, have have like around the time amount, I lived there. You have to have a certain yep. amount of homegrown. You have to have a certain amount of players that you've trained. Um, and then there are different EU laws. But we could go into like a ton of them. But but I'm, I'm talking 20, 30 years ago, like when before the Premier League. I, I seem to recall that there was some sort of oh, quota where you couldn't have more than – like three or four, and maybe I'm just completely making that up. Twenty but. years ago, Mike, I couldn't count to twenty. So <laughs> back, you know, I, when, yeah, back when AJ was a no fetus. Was, yeah. <laughs> so, How old so, are you, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 971 years old. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Trousty. Thank you, Justin, uh, for your for your excellent questions. Um, so just yeah, quick wrap up of the Premier League. Liverpool loses, United drops points, stays in six for the hundred and second week in a row. Uh, <laughs> great week to start to the weekend, and then you know those nerves kicked in, but we did it. So yep. um, great, great week. Hopefully we'll have uh, you know have have another one the following Tuesday. But uh, it was not a great, great week for me in the picks of the week. You've you've thrown me off my game, jackass. Well, Mike, when the when the listeners agree that you've been cheating, 
<laughs> the you've listeners. Been, you've been trumping the results. There's no result. There's no research to show that. But uh, hey, you've yeah, in DC. Have you seen Trump milling about yet? Uh, no, I try. I, I actually was in DC for the first time this evening at a uh, another uh, Washington Capitals destruction of an opponent. But uh, but no, I didn't see him anywhere or any remnants of him. But um, but yeah, I've returned to normal service now after getting bullied by your homeboy fact finding crew, who's found nothing to to pin on me. But uh, I, I seem to no longer be able to pick a fucking Premier League game. So, so nice job. Um, before next weekend's games, uh, we have the guest spot. Last week, uh, the guest spot was ably done by, uh, I believe, George mm-hmm. from Boston, um, who did quite well with 53 points. Andy, you pulled out a, a double on the Arsenal game to 52 points, and... The only point I got out of all five games was the Arsenal game, and only just. So with 48 points, that's me pulling up the rear yet again. Um, here are five games of the week. Actually, you know what? You can fucking announce them because you're because I have to go first now because of your stupid rules. Okay. Shit game of the week is Southampton at Swansea. AJ. Uh, yeah, AJ. You go. <laughs> wow. Did you want me going first? Do you want me to look at? Uh, sorry, I gotta pull up all the uh, fixtures. Swansea with sc- did with a score. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, they did beat Liverpool. Um, I think, but Southampton have been doing all right. But they're gonna obviously lose to us uh, before that game. So I think we're gonna have to. <laughs> so I think we're gonna have to go with two uh, nil uh, Southampton. Okay, nice. Um... I have it three two Swansea, and and by the transitive stupidity correlative meaningless property of consecutive games, the next time we play Liverpool, we should be beating them seven to two. Um, <laughs> Perfect. You know, based on what we've seen over the last two weeks with Swansea, so um, feeling pretty good about our four nil win against what we can now only consider to be a simply amazing Swansea team. Um, I think Swansea will nip Man United for the final Europa League spot. Uh, these are all these are all guarantees. Uh, but for this week, 3-2 to the Swansea. Andy. I'm going to go 1-0 Swansea. I think they're going to nick this. I was close to, Yeah, I was close to going with a draw, but I think Swansea will nick it. Okay. More of an explanation than he normally gives, by the way. <laughs> uh, all right, what do we got? Chelsea at Liverpool? Uh, I'll start off because I've been told I need to start off. Uh, Liverpool has lost one out of their last one games at Anfield. <laughs> Little known stat, and I think it's just this is a prime time for that amazing streak to come to an end. Uh, two to one, Liverpool. AJ, Ooh, damn, yeah, that's kind of what I was going to go for, but I'm going to switch it up now because of that. Um, oh, I think... look who's doing it! Yeah. <laughs> that's what I've been criticized for doing. <laughs> now go ahead, whatever you I want. I think man. we're going to have to go. I'll go. I'll go a, a one nil, Liverpool. You know, uh, Chelsea don't give up that many goals, but. Uh, Diego Costa is going to just get a red card and fuck himself over and then end up re re uh, going like did you see anybody see his celebration when he scored for Chelsea the little chatter thing yeah he's going to end up still going to China so <laughs> well on to Liverpool this would be a good time for him to get a, a red card a la Kun Aguero before we played them although that didn't pan out very well for us <laughs> But, of course, if he gets a red card in this game, they'll just go and sign uh, Lewandowski and have him in the squad time for our game. Right. Andy. I'm going to go 2-2. All right. Exciting result. Man City at West Ham. We got City who just went to West Ham two weeks ago and beat uh, beat them 5-0 in the FA Cup. So, you know, I'm trying to figure what should what should be any different here. But what should be different is the fuck you Pyatt bounce. Yeah. That's happening. That's Seriously, right. West Ham are sublime, sublimin. They're unstoppable all of a sudden, and they are going to take this game three to two. Man City. So you're you can tell your relatives, uh, you're welcome. Andy. <laughs> AJ, I think West Ham are going to pull the old uh, switcheroo. Five zero West Ham. Oh, very nice. Um, so we, uh, dude, we'll we'll give you triple points if that happens. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go two nil city. 
Because that's an easy point to pick up. That's no fun. <laughs> well, I mean, at the end of the day, I, you know what, AJ? I went through like the last probably 15 just thinking, I'll just pick all upsets. And I went from like having a great lead to being almost, I was tied with Mike last week. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. So Which is embarrassing I, if you're I, tied with Mike. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, that's so not what you want. <laughs> I got to go back and I got to start picking my, uh, I got to start picking correctly again. But no, I, you know, I, I do see. The, the West Ham results since the whole Paya thing have been great for them, but City just absolutely thrashed them. And, and West Ham beat Palace and Middlesbrough. I mean, at the end of the day, they should be beating those two teams. So I'm going to go 2-0 City. Okay. All right, I'm, I'm going to do a podcast side here. So, so why don't you announce the next game, Okay, Andy? Um, Hull at Man United. <sighs> you, know, you know, it's Hull. It's whole. I mean, as in whole. They suck. So uh, I'm going to go 3 0 United. <laughs> That's Oof. a podcast side right there. You have, to, you have to come across as though you're really just torn and, and really pensive about it, but realistically, you're just buying time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to have to go with. Uh... Ooh, we're gonna have to go two one United. I I would say three two Hull, but it's February first, so at that point they'll have lost uh, Robert Snodgrass, their only decent player. That's true, and 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 I love how you say we're gonna have to go to like the, the, there's a team sitting behind you, <laughs> all, they passed you little scraps of paper, and you're like, okay, we're we're, we're gonna go with United two to one. <laughs> uh, Andy, I feel bad for Hull. They've played United January tenth. January 26th and February 1st. Um, I think United... City beat, and West Ham. I, I think United beats Hull uh, 1-0. Okay. Andy, or AJ, this is almost over, so your, your, your long national nightmare is coming to an end very soon. <laughs> uh, Watford at Arsenal. <laughs> I, got, I got Arsenal... Uh, you know, Arsenal on Tuesdays and Wednesdays in the Premier League... Not the most confidence-inspiring team, um, no. and and that and I do love me a reverse jinx when I really need us to win. I cannot pick us to win. I got, I got in trouble at the Everton game. I think I picked us to win six nil, uh, and then like walked into like a Joe Pesci situation and Goodfellas. So, um, so I am going to actually take a one-one draw there. Oh wow. <sighs> Yeah, I think I think one of the Southampton. If we do well against Southampton in, in the FA Cup, a couple of days before, I think we'll do poorly against Watford and vice versa. So based off that, I think yeah, I'm gonna have to somewhat agree with you. I'm gonna go two two <laughs> Watford. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, Watford haven't won in the league since December 10th. Um, oh, you did some some fucking research. Well, I'm looking at their <laughs> results right now, Mike. I gotta start taking this shit seriously again. I'm gonna go two 0 <laughs> Arsenal. Okay. Yeah. Another another we are home. So yeah. That's good. An- another should be picked up point for you there, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm yeah. I'm trying to get a little fancy here, and it's gonna land me in the relegation situation <laughs> again. All right. Cool. Um, preview of upcoming games. We just talked about it. FA Cup versus Southampton. Um, at at risk of upsetting the uh, the the karma gods. I mean. Can everyone stop freaking out for a second about this game? I mean, I, honestly speaking, we've never seen a situation where we're so freaked out about playing the 11th best team in the Premier League. Uh, I've heard supporters who act like this was the worst possible draw we could have gotten. Uh, worse than Chelsea, United, City, Bayern, away. I mean, any, any of those draws, bogey team or not, we should have no problem going out and trying to win this. I mean, it's like Ric Flair always said, and and you do. Andy does love his his wrestling. Oh, to be the to be the best, you have to beat the eleventh best. Uh, <laughs> woo! We're gonna uh, lose. <laughs> I mean, look, come on, and and I believe they might be missing Van Dyke or Van Dijk or whatever. Yeah, uh, they are. Been. I believe. Uh, I know he got hurt. I don't know if he's gonna be, you know, if he's that hurt or not. And and they just also sold Font uh, or Fonte or. Uh, whatever. So I mean, they're they're go? Uh, to uh, West Ham, as a matter of fact. Did he really? Uh, he yeah. Was, but his move to Manchester United, he ended up at West Ham United. That's a good signing for them. 
for like six mil. And, and you know, he's 32, 33, so he's a little murder sacker ish, except, you know, he's not. He can actually mur- jump more than him. <laughs> he can jump. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think we can win this. AJ uh, is all lost now that we drew Southampton out of a, bo- uh, out of a bag of balls. I, it, it, it's not it's not all lost, but I I, you know, I mean, and I don't think it's the worst we could have gotten. But um, they are kind of our bogey team of late. Um, they do always play a nice high pressing game against us that we don't seem to be able to handle for some reason when we play them. But like you said, with Van Dyke out, Font being sold, they're gonna have to play Yoshida, and I don't even know who their fourth choice center back is. So uh, I I think we should be a little more confident than. Um, I would have been if those two were uh, were in the team. There's one man on that field that can hurt us, yep. and he will hurt us. We just Long. have to hurt them worse. What'd you say? Long. Yeah, Shane yeah. Long. I don't he, think he we. Uh, I, I don't think we see a weakened team for this. I think Venga knows how well they play us, um, and uh, I think we go out with a full strength. I, I think so. I mean, Ospina will come in, but other than that, I think uh, maybe you know. maybe the Ox gets some time. Um, maybe I he think I think the Ox comes in for Giroud, possibly even, and Lucas maybe even comes in for for Ozil. So have like Chambers, Chamberlain, and and Lucas on the wings. Alexis Sanchez, up front, yeah. just because he'll piss, he'll might cry, see he doesn't play, start. and then it will be in the number ten. Perhaps. Yeah, maybe yeah. we'll see Welbeck up front. Who knows? I mean, oh Welbeck. Yeah, yeah, we got we we got a, a luxury here, and and uh, I just don't want to mix it up too much to the point where I don't there's think no we're there, there's see, no understanding between the players. I don't think we're gonna see like Ainsley Maitland Niles no. or whatever the no. fuck his name no. is. Please, we, no. No, we, we yeah, have to get off to a better start than yeah, we did against yeah. them in the EFL Cup. That's for damn sure. Yeah. But I, I think we can do it. I would have rather gone to Norwich, but I think we can do this. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, guys, it's about time to wrap it up. Um, we have three new countries who joined us this week, according to our, our surely uh, uh, just mistake-ridden software that we use. But uh, <laughs> we're up to 59 different countries now. Country 57, we welcome to the podcast Brazil. Hey. hey. We've so, been asking uh, Ronaldinho to tune in, and he finally has. Thank you. Wait. We we appreciate uh, Danielson uh, you know, <laughs> sitting in the home, sitting oh, in the God. house with Ronaldinho, <laughs> listening to our podcast on a transistor radio. Um, and um, by the way, Santos, speaking of Brazilian, do you know that that he has five goals in eight appearances for his little podunk team in Turkey? Good for him. Five goals in eight appearances for for Andre Santos. He did. He did have an amazing left foot. That's just the only thing he had. But, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Um, but we all know it's actually Pele that's listening to our podcast. Uh, yeah. it's, keeping, it's keeping him alive. <laughs> Country number 58, Hong Kong. The HK. You know who the most famous gooner in Hong Kong is? Jackie Chan. Oh. He, Jackie Chan is, is listening to our podcast doing somersaults and flips and, nice. and, uh, and fighting other podcasts. Um, and then country 59, I struggled with this one because I like to try to think of who might be actually listening to us in this country. Estonia. Ooh, I and know I, tons of Estonians. The, I, my family, I think, traces back to Estonia, but they're all dead, so go. that's probably oh. not them listening. Um, Ravnar Klagan from Liverpool is the only guy I could come up with, and, and, and frankly, he better not let anybody find out that he's listening to this podcast. <laughs> so, uh, I can't think so, of anyone famous from Estonia. Dude, I did research and I still couldn't fun- come up with anybody. I mean, <laughs> I did research on Wikipedia, on other websites for like 20 minutes, and the most famous person I came up with was Ravnar Klagan from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> so that should tell you something. Um, but thank you to whoever it is listening in Estonia and fucking shutting us off for, for the final time based on this conversation. Um, please do check us out. Um, and and talk to your friends, stand on top of a building. We we'd love to 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 continue to grow our numbers and reach new people. Um, we're uh, we're on iTunes. We're on what's that other thing called the fucking um, uh, the thing that you told us that we should go on, Andy? Stitcher. Uh, yeah, Stitcher. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Stitcher, by the way. <laughs> uh, clearly, and um, YouTube now as well. Um, and uh, please leave us a result. Let us know if you like the pod. And uh, AJ, thank you for coming on, not only on short notice uh, tonight, but you're an excellent guest. Thanks, uh, we AJ. enjoyed 
Yeah, we enjoy your pod and 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 Mario as well. We'll, we'll look forward to having you on sometime, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. I absolutely love the experience. Thank you guys for having me on. Always love uh, being invited, and you guys are always welcome on the full ninety Gooner anytime. And uh, yeah, I definitely love doing the pod. I'm gonna have to uh, tune in more. Excellent. Awesome. All right, have a great week, fellas. You too, man. Come nice. on, you come on, you Gooners. <laughs>